Hello YouTube, and welcome to another Elder Scrolls lore video. Today, after popular request last week during the Serana video, we are talking about Cicero, another follower with an equally large and equally interesting backstory, if radically different. I decided to do this this week, as this week I was working on another video, uh, The Languages of Tamriel, and that video needed some more time to complete, so therefore I've chosen to do the video on Cicero this week. So I've got more time to work on the other one. That said, let's kick off with this video on Cicero. So, Cicero is probably one of Skyrim's more interesting characters, as next to his own story, this jester gave us a lot of information on the other provinces during the Fourth Era, uh, before the Elder Scrolls Blades and Legends actually became a thing. It's clear that some of the information in those games, uh, the developers are clearly based on the information that we know from Cicero's journal, because coming from Skyrim, he led his life in Cyrodiil before. We don't know where he was born, or what his life was like before he joined the Dark Brotherhood. All we know is that he has the contents of his journal and those are all set beyond the year 186 of the fourth era as this is the year that Cicero decided to start keeping a journal. But we know that he had been a brotherhood assassin for quite some time before starting to keep it. The reason he starts to keep a journal is because he feels like so much is happening to him and that has happened to him that it would be an insult to Sithis not to record all the events that's happening to him in the future. His journal begins with his account of how he had to leave the Bruma Sanctuary of the Dark Brotherhood after it was destroyed, and how he then arrived at the Chadenol Sanctuary at the end of the year 186 of the Fourth Era, in hopes of continuing to work for the Brotherhood there. It seems that the Bruma Sanctuary was destroyed or attacked at some point, as he mentioned that all his brothers and sisters from that sanctuary are dead, and that they only live on in his memories and in his dreams. This indicates that he might actually be the sole survivor of this sanctuary's purge. At this point, Cicero was still fully sane, or, well, at least as sane as an assassin can be. Uh, he was not the jester that we know from Skyrim, uh, he didn't have the laughter yet, and he was just a regular assassin, and he was welcomed as such in this Chadenol Sanctuary, where he basically just continued working for the Brotherhood. He was taken into the Sanctuary, apparently very warmly, and started handling contracts for them, as he had done in Bruma before. At that time, the listener of the Brotherhood was a Breton woman named Alessandre Dupré, who lived in Braville and stars in the Elder Scrolls Legends Dark Brotherhood chapter. As listeners, she apparently did good work. Uh, however, things didn't really go well for the Brotherhood. Cicero saw what was left of the Brotherhood deteriorate, as slowly the Brotherhood lost foothold in Tamriel, with many sanctuaries across the continent being destroyed one way or another, or abandoned by Brotherhood members who fled to other sanctuaries. The exact reason for all these sanctuaries' destructions and abandonments isn't really clear, but something or someone seemed to have been working against the Brotherhood during this period, and we never really get confirmed who exactly it was, or if it was structured at all, uh, or if it was just really bad luck. But all these losses led to a division within the Brotherhood. There were assassins who wanted to try and reclaim all their lost sanctuaries, but also those who wished to strengthen what was left uh, of the Brotherhood at this point, and consolidate that before trying to expand again. Cicero was not really on either side of the fence, and he didn't really care what way things would happen, as long as the Brotherhood somehow kept up the illusion that they were able to be everywhere at once. Something that had been made harder by the fact that they lost a lot of manpower across the continent. For example, there was no longer a physical Dark Brotherhood presence in the province of Hammerfell or the province of Blackmarsh by the year 186, making contracts there very hard to pick up and carry out. This really frustrated Cicero as he saw the Brotherhood deteriorating around him and losing a lot of resources left and right, until they had to give up on several projects across Tamriel, including the revival of the Shadow Skill training facilities in Blackmarsh. The Brotherhood simply no longer had the men and resources to continue with those kind of things. But Cicero keeps his mouth shut and continues to carry out contracts for the Brotherhood. He kills several individuals like a Baroness and eventually even a Grand Champion of the Arena. Things were pretty good for him all things considered, his pay was good and contracts were plentiful. But still, he kept worrying about the future of the Brotherhood, even more so when he heard that the last sanctuary in High Rock, the Wayrest Sanctuary, had fallen after the Corsair pirates had overrun the city. 
There were no survivors, resulting in only three operating sanctuaries being left across the continent. The Chainal Sanctuary in Cyrodiil, where Cicero himself was, the Corinth Sanctuary in Elsewhere, and the Falkreath Sanctuary in Skyrim. Not much later, the Corinth Sanctuary was also abandoned as its members joined the Cerdanol Sanctuary after it was decided that the Dark Brotherhood would be more effective across the continent if those members would be concentrated in Cyrodiil as well. Then the worst blow hit the Brotherhood, as the city of Braville erupted into violence as the two most dangerous skooma trafficking gangs warred with each other on the streets of Braville. This caused the entire city to have to close their doors and protect their homes to avoid being killed. The listener at that time, Alessandre Dupre, who we talked about earlier, had to employ mercenaries to guard her house and was later killed herself by her vengeful stepfather, as we can see in the Elder Scrolls Legends Dark Brotherhood chapter, while she was defending the Nightmother's crypt. This all happened because meanwhile the statue of the lucky old lady, which protected the Nightmother's crypt, had been destroyed, meaning that the Nightmother's crypt had been opened. After Alessandre's death, another Brotherhood member brought the Night Mother in her coffin to the Channel Sanctuary for safekeeping, after the forgotten hero possibly helped him escape. As the Night Mother was brought to Chadenol, the true gravity of the situation came to the few remaining Brotherhood members. There were only two sanctuaries left, the Listener was gone and the Night Mother's script had been destroyed. Without a listener, the leader of the Chadenol Sanctuary appointed Cicero to be the keeper of the Night Mother. He was to be a guardian for the body and keep it in good shape until there was a listener. Cicero felt honored but also felt quite sad as from that moment on he would no longer be able to carry out contracts. But he was granted one final contract before becoming the keeper. He was to kill a jester. He wanted to savor his last ever contract and decided to enjoy the kill. He killed the jester in cold blood and according to Cicero, the jester laughed and laughed until he was finally dead and silent. After his final contract, Cicero's tenure as keeper began. He took quite well to the job and felt honored to do it, but as he tended to the body for months and months, he became frustrated with his job. He was frustrated with the fact that the Night Mother refused to pick a new listener and felt like she should pick him as the listener as he was a good keeper and protected her all this time. In his frustration, he kept longing for contracts, to use his blade again. He then became obsessed with the memory of his last kill, the Jester, and became obsessed with his laughs and his screams. As the Brotherhood deteriorated further around him, with less and less people having faith in them, resulting in very little contracts, the Chadenol Sanctuary was starting to lose morale, until finally, there was a listener. Russia, the Khajiit leader of the Sanctuary, said that the Night Mother spoke to him, finally. But Cicero found out that he lied and that it was merely a trick to try and keep a hold of the sanctuary. As keeper, Cicero then insisted that Russia needed to be killed for his treachery, and so it was that the Dark Brotherhood there killed its last leader. From that moment on, the Chadenol Sanctuary quickly fell apart, until a few days later there were only three people left, including Cicero. Cicero then starts to hallucinate slightly and gets obsessed with silence and obsessed with laughter. Often he dreamt of his last contract, the Jester, and Cicero then goes completely mental as he attains what he calls the laughter. Apparently a gift from the Night Mother to cheer him up. This laughter is essentially becoming the weird Jester that we know him from in Skyrim. He goes completely mad and then eventually the last two assassins also leave. One is then killed by bandits after he leaves, and the other apparently went out for food, never to return. It doesn't really become clear whether he just decided to stop being an assassin as he saw that things were hopeless, or maybe he was killed as well. Cicero is now alone, alone with his thoughts, alone with the laughter. His writings from this moment on are very few and filled with madness. Over the course of the next 8 years, he was alone in the Chadenal Sanctuary, hoping that he would become the listener eventually and save the Brotherhood, as he kept tending to the Night Mother and descended further into madness. During this time, he wrote letters to Astrid of the Skyrim Sanctuary, which still functioned, and he wondered how, but he couldn't leave the Sanctuary, as the world outside the Chadenal Sanctuary was not safe for the Night Mother, and apparently Astrid refused to send assassins to help him get out of there. It took 8 years before he was finally disturbed, as unidentified people apparently discovered the Chainadol Sanctuary, causing Cicero to flee with the Night Mother towards Skyrim. He traveled by ship to Skyrim, judging that that would be the most safe way to carry the Night Mother's body there. He then traveled by ship and apparently landed in Dawnstar. 
On his way to the Falkreath Sanctuary, the cart that he uses to carry the Night Mother's coffin actually breaks down and he cannot really continue his journey to Falkreath with the broken cart. However, as his cart is broken, he can actually meet the Dragonborn, who can either decide to help him or report him to the guards. If you report him to the guards, he ends up in custody for a while and he will remember the encounter later when you meet him in the Dark Brotherhood questline. Or if you help him, he will remember you fondly and say that the Night Mother and him himself are very grateful for your assistance in the past. Once he arrives at Falkreath, finally, he discovers that Astrid, its leader, has abandoned the old ways. Most people know the story from here already since most people have played the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood questline, so I won't go into it too much, but once there he starts trying to set the members of the sanctuary up against Astrid, some even with success, trying to get the Night Mother's authority and obedience of the Dark Brotherhood tenets back on top of the agenda. He's also slightly frustrated when the Dragonborn becomes the listener, when the Night Mother actually speaks to the Dragonborn instead of to Cicero, but eventually he lets go of his frustration when the listener proves himself to be a capable assassin and loyal to the Brotherhood. This culminates eventually in him trying to kill Astrid because she undermines the Night Mother's authority. His assassination attempt, as we all know, fails and Arnbjorn, the husband of Astrid, saves her and goes after him. Astrid then sends the new listener after him to kill him and Cicero will then beg for his life after you, the player or the listener, have actually gotten past all of his traps that he set for you in the Dawnstar Sanctuary. He then pleads, saying that the Night Mother and Sithis do not want him to die yet, which is both true actually. If you choose to spare him, he will later become your follower after the listener refounded the Dark Brotherhood in the Dawnstar Sanctuary after the Falkreath Sanctuary is destroyed by the Penitus Oculatus and yeah, he can become your loyal aide. In the end, I think Cicero is one of the more interesting characters in Skyrim. While most of the characters are not that deep, Cicero is one of the characters just like Serana, who we've covered last week, that actually has a deep and intriguing backstory. Speaking of that backstory, we actually covered it by now. I mean, I didn't really want to recount the entire Dark Brotherhood questline. I wanted to cover, uh, well, Cicero's backstory. Before I end this video, allow me to thank my top patrons, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Mr. Metalloid 1v1, Mr. Christmas, Mr. Gabriel Binda, and Mr. Para. These people, along with the other people on screen, make my weekly lore series possible. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, stick around until the next one, next Thursday. Sorry for the two character lore videos just in a row, but due to a lot of university work and a lot of personal stress, I did not really have the time to finish my video on some of the languages on Tamriel. So, I hope you'll be looking forward to that next week. Uh, that said, uh, yeah, I hope that I'll see you all next week when that airs. It will air on Thursday around the same time. Yeah, that was it. Bye-bye.